others because I'm delighted now to be joined, having had um, a gentleman called Brian Catt on the show a couple of weeks ago uh, from one side of the climate debate. Quite rightly, I was challenged um, on messages to say, well, could you get someone on from the other side of the debate? And that's completely fair and proper. Um, and I hope, in a sense, that this section gets as many views as my chat with Brian uh, Cat got two weeks ago. We had over half a million views, and I'm delighted to welcome now, all the way on Zoom from Ottawa in Canada, is Gerald Kutney, who is a uh, he is a PhD in chemistry, and until recently. Uh, an adjunct professor of environmental science at the University of Northern British Columbia. Not only that, I've done a bit of research, um, but I believe, uh, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that Gerald is ranked 16th out of 500 uh, on the Sustmem for Climate and Energy as uh, one of the leading influencers online. And, you know, Gerald very much believes that uh, climate change, I think potentially is a uh, a growing risk of catastrophe but we'll get in that Gerald a very good um well it's morning to you I think it's about seven in the morning thank you for waking up early uh, it's good afternoon here but um Gerald you I think you picked up on my debate with Brian Catt and it's fair to say that you were pretty punchy about coming back at me uh, the um the message you yeah, said was that I was disgraceful for even giving Brian Catt airtime. Gerald, do you believe in free speech? I believe in free speech, but you also have to look at the credibility of the free speech is. I think it's important when we talk about important issues like, like climate change, that the people to discuss it have some credibility if they're going to criticize it. But surely I'm that's not, not free aware. speech, Gerald. I mean, well, you know, there are some people who are obviously very highly qualified, but the rest of us should be allowed to be able to debate it, shouldn't we? Oh, you can debate anything you'd like, but n no one has to pay attention to it. Credibility is everything in an issue like this. It's too important for uh, uncredible uh, opinions to criticize science. Science criticizes itself, and everyone can have an opinion. I totally agree with that, but it doesn't mean anything. But the point is that science has never settled, is it, Gerald? I mean, science evolves because scientists quite properly uh, challenge each other's conclusions and of course evidence changes over time so you know science is never settled that's a fair point i totally agree with that but one thing that science is is accepted and what that means is a theory is, is accepted by the greater scientific community until new evidence suggests otherwise if that ever happens Okay, but you, for example, uh, just recently there's a, a, a new group called Clintel with uh, over a thousand scientists and uh, experienced professionals who signed up to it, uh, you know, putting a different point of view, some very eminent and credible people within that. It, it seems to me that your approach to this debate is that, in a sense, you're not allowed to, to debate it or talk about it unless you're highly qualified and agree with your line of opinion. My point is there is no debate over the science. Of course there is. There's uh, always debate about science. That's the definition of science. Uh, it not the science of climate change. It's, it's not at all. Again, you, you confuse the idea of someone with an unqualified opinion versus new evidence that suggests the science is wrong. Again, people can argue all they want, but that doesn't change the science. The science is clear. It's been clear about climate change for over three decades. So uh, what science are you referring to there, Gerald? I'm talking about that climate change is real. It's mainly caused by us, and it's something that we need to deal with urgency. And uh, but do you think, so therefore, do you think I'm a denier, Gerald? Yeah, I do. Really? Yes. How long has climate change gone on for, Gerald? Uh, the typical climate denier question is that climate change has been changing forever. But the, what makes the current climate change special is that this time is caused by us. It's taking place at a rate that's never been seen before. And so why that's important is if it's caused by us, then we can stop it. Okay, so you think I've been to deny. Do you, Joe, what car do you drive? Do you drive an electric car? 
Ah, I, I, I wish I did, but no, I don't. And so you drive a fossil fueled car? I do. Really? Uh, do you know I what car I drive, used... Gerald? No, I don't. Have a guess. I hope it's an EV. I drive an electric vehicle. Uh, Excellent. Have you invested in any solar panels, Gerald, to reduce no, emissions? No, I have not. You've not. So no. You haven't. So in a sense. You're saying the science has settled and you presume it's a catastrophe and yet you don't have an electric car and you haven't invested in solar panels. I've got an electric car. I've invested in hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of solar panels that are saving hundreds of tons of CO2 every single year. How dare you? How dare you accuse me and smear me and label me for being a denier when I'm doing more to reduce emissions than you are? So I, 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 I'll take it back if you say that you agree that climate change is real and is caused by us and we have to do something to, to tackle it. Gerald, I've always said that climate change has existed since the year dot and it will continue to exist. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, a fan of, I'm a fan of reducing emissions because I want cleaner, quieter cities. I live in them. Uh, and that's what I mean. What I'm not convinced about is that we're facing a climate catastrophe and hopefully you can correct me if I'm wrong, but no one's presented any science to me that shows that if we get to net zero, if we get there, that that's going to make any difference to climate change, which is affected by things that are much, much bigger than CO2. No, that's, that's not true. If we get to net zero, it's not going to improve it. It's going to stop it from being, becoming worse. And that's the scary part of climate change. Uh, just ask me, answer this one quick question for me. Do you agree that climate change today is mainly caused by humans? Um, look, the, actually, no, I don't. I think that things like solar variability, things like sea level oscillation, things like volcanic activity, both above ground and in the ocean, have a much, much bigger impact, as they always have done for millions of years, than the quantity of man-made CO2. There's no question. You're absolutely right. CO2 levels have increased. But, Gerald, the temperature that we face at the moment, we're about 1% warmer than the coldest point in the last 10,000 years. We're still two degrees colder than the warmest point in the last 10,000 years. I'm not quite sure those stats are correct, but I do appreciate your candor when you're describing how you feel about climate change. But just to get back, by definition, that is the definition of a climate denier. Science does not agree with you. There is no science in the peer-reviewed literature that supports that modern climate change is caused by volcanoes or the sun. Those are the, that's the rhetoric of climate denialism. But I've just proven, I've literally proven to you that I'm not a denier, and yet you still try and smear and label me as a denier. Climate denier is in a sphere, it's simply a fact. What climate denier means is someone who challenges the accepted science. I've summarized the accepted science to you. Uh, you haven't told me anything about the accepted science. You've just said that it's accepted and it's settled. Science is never settled, and you've given no proof whatsoever, no facts, to back up your point. What I stated was, is accepted science remains accepted until new evidence suggests otherwise. There has not been any new evidence in the modern age of climate science, which has extended over, over half a century. Every decade, the evidence has become stronger and stronger that the science I briefly summarized to you is correct. So what's interesting here is that you you call yourself a climate scientist and you use social media essentially to try and smear and label uh, people and, and you accuse us of disinformation and propaganda but you're only talking about facts in the last 50 to 100 years or so since sort of the industrialization period but I'm looking back at science and data from ice cores and things that goes back 10,000 years plus plus. So it feels to me that even though I'm not a qualified scientist, I actually think that I'm applying more rigor to the data than you are. I'm sure you do feel that way. But if you look at the information that you've got, you've got that from climate scientists. And climate scientists know in the far distant past, you can go back millions of years if you want to. But when you look at modern climate change, which is the most important to us because we are living that now. We are suffering the consequences of the climate crisis now. Science is clear. It is mainly caused by us. So, so what, are the, what are the consequences that concerns you about rising CO2 levels that we should be so terrified of, Gerald? The big thing about climate change, which what the word 
says itself is the climate is changing and the big effect is that extreme weather events become more common <clears throat> and more severe. You've seen that in Europe with, this, with the major drought that's caused uh, water levels to decrease along the major rivers uh, throughout Europe and in other countries as well. But we've had droughts and floods before, Gerald. A hundred years ago, 96% more people died from extreme weather events than now because guess what? We're smart, we're intelligent, we work out how to adapt and mitigate. The stats you're giving are ones that are famous for Lombard for showing up. They're very misleading. Someone's either the dead stats, or they're not dead. How can that be misleading? The point is, is that for weather events, extreme weather events, they are more severe and more common than they were in the past. You're showing out statistics that are complicated by mother yeah. many other factors. The important thing is, look at the science. I, Climate I, science is clear. It increases the frequency and the severity of G extreme weather events. Gerald, this is brilliant. Um, we're getting loads of messages coming in. We've got to take a break because without the breaks, we can't, we, we can't pay everybody um, for the adverts. Hang on, don't go anywhere.